Hey guys, what's going on? Jeb here, and today I'm going to be bringing you a video talking about what it's going to take for 2018 to be a bull year for Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency markets as a whole. I'm going to be talking about different technical features on the Bitcoin chart that we'd like to see, and I'm also going to be talking about different news and adoption related items that would help bring about this highly anticipated bull market for the year of 2018. But if you enjoy that idea, and if you enjoy this video, you should definitely think about leaving a like and subscribing because I make five cryptocurrency videos a week. So let's get right into it. Bitcoin is currently trading at $7,500 with a market capitalization of $127 billion, just under $130 billion. And I think we should start today's video off with a little bit of context and a little bit of perspective. Bitcoin had an all-time high of $7,500 just in November. If we come here on the chart, last time Bitcoin was trading... Uh, at $7,500 and people were excited about that was in November on November 8th Bitcoin ran up to $7,500 that was the all-time high only five months ago so it's kind of funny where it used to be an optimistic thing to say that Bitcoin's going to go to $20,000 or that Bitcoin's going to go to $10,000 and now it's a pessimistic thing to say that Bitcoin's going to go to $10,000 and now it's actually become optimistic again because we're back below it it's kind of funny how that changes but we need to keep some context when we're talking about long-term items on Bitcoin because Bitcoin does move very fast. It wasn't that long ago that $5,000 was the all-time high for Bitcoin. It wasn't that long ago that $3,000 was the all-time high for Bitcoin. And now we're all dreading the idea of Bitcoin going that low because we've had such a massive run. Bitcoin, we need to remember, went absolutely parabolic in the year of 2016 and especially in the year of 2017, especially in the year of 2017. Bitcoin's all-time high for, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Bitcoin's all-time high for a very long time was just over $1,150, right up here close to $1,200, and then we saw a subsequent pullback all the way down to $200, and from there, Bitcoin's price 100 x in the span of two and a half years. So guys, we need to remember that we're still doing pretty well, even though we've had over a 50% pullback, close to a 66% pullback from the all-time high. As far as price action in the long term, we're still doing pretty well. We're still doing pretty well. So we need to keep that in mind. Let's talk about some different technical features on what are technical aspects of what it's going to take for 2018 to be a bull year, as I told you in the intro. First of all, if this death cross happens, we're going to want to see the 50-day 50, the 50 moving average come back up below and through the 200-day moving average, creating what is called a golden cross. What we're talking about here is a death cross with the 50-day crossing below the 200-day. That's called a death cross. The 50-day coming up below the 200-day and crossing above it, that is called a golden cross. A golden cross is normally a pretty good representation that the market is going to go bullish. A death cross is normally going to represent this going to go bearish. Honestly, I think we're very close to the bottom here. If we come in here to the hour chart, we can see that we've gotten a little bit of support here on the long-term downtrend. I've talked about that in a lot of videos. And we also saw a break of this level of support right here at $7,700 or $7,800. We had a several bottoms here, but we, uh, we managed to fall below it. We're getting a double bottom here at $7,400. Hopefully that will hold. If that doesn't hold, what we need to see is that we need to stay above this long-term uptrend. That I've talked about in a lot of videos. This one is established with two touches down here at $1,800 and $3,000 respectively. We also touched this uptrend to $6,000 to help verify it. So we need to stay above this. This long-term uptrend would bring us support at about $12,500 by the end of the year. This vertical line right here represents the end of 2018. We want to stay above that because that would bring us support all the way up to $12,500 uh, $12, by the end of the year. That's a very important level of long-term support. We want to stay above that pretty much forever on the Bitcoin chart, to be totally honest. We don't really ever want to break below that because that's a pretty nice that's a pretty nice angle we have there. We like that support. It's not too steep. It's not too, it's not too, uh, it's not too cold. It's not too hot. It's in the Goldilocks zone of support lines. So we want to stay above that. What we also want to see is that we want to see Bitcoin get back above some of these levels of support that are really holding it down. We want to get back above the 200-day moving average, and we want to get back up above the 100-day moving average and the 50-day moving average. The 100-day moving average isn't on here because TradingView only allows me to have three indicators because there's no way I'm going to pay. $10 a month for trading view. Sorry, trading view. We also want to stay above this long-term downtrend. I already said that. One thing that we also need to make sure that we remember is that we're looking at Bitcoin on the auto scale, but we also want to look at it on the logarithm scale. And if we look at Bitcoin on the logarithm scale, that's going to throw all of my trend lines off, but this one I'll redraw for you. That's not what I meant to do. Let's do this and drag that up here. Okay. We want to stay above, or not stay above, we want to get above this long-term downtrend. So if we see on the logarithm scale, we have a long-term downtrend here with two touch, or three touches here at $20,000, $17,000, and about eleven eight eleven eight. We need to get back up above this. As you can see, we're pretty far from it, but we want to get back above that because that's a pretty strong level of resistance. If we get a fourth bounce on that, that is not going to be good. We want to get back above that. That's pretty much all I want to show you on the log scale. So let's go back to auto. 
what's probably going to happen, like I've said, is that we're probably going to pull back and get support at this long-term uptrend. And I'd very like, I'd very much, excuse me, I'd very much like to see that as a level of support so that we can get a volume climax and really start going back in, uh, going back up towards all-time highs. If we're going to see a bull run in 2017, or 2018 rather, 2017's gone, we saw a bull run in 2017. If we're going to see a proper bull run in the remainder of 2018, what we're going to need to see is we're going to need to see a lot of regulation that is not terrible for Bitcoin, or rather, we're going to need to see we're going to need to see governments adopting a friendly tone towards cryptocurrency. Let me restate, restate what I said a second ago. We, we're going to need to see governments either not care about cryptocurrencies, or we're going to need to see them have a very friendly tone towards cryptocurrencies and see the and see the innovation that this new kind of technology, distributed ledger, blockchain uh, technology, all these new technologies that are coming out of the space can bring. We're going to need to see adoption by the by the public at least coming closer to mass adoption. I don't think there's any way that complete mass adoption with billions of people using cryptocurrency is going to happen by the end of the year. But we'll see what happens. We're also going to need to see a lot of big companies that are currently somewhat hostile to cryptocurrency like Google and Facebook and Twitter banning advertising. We'd, we'd like to see them be a little bit more friendly towards the space, perhaps launching their own cryptocurrency, we, and we'll see what happens there. We'd like to see a lot of people that are very powerful in the financial and in the, um, in the media industry, or not the media industry, but in the industry's where they have access to public opinion, we're going to need to see those people be very friendly towards Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. We'd like to see stuff like that happen. Like instead of Bitcoin banning crypto ads, how about them making their own blockchain? That would be that would be some very good news. And we'd also like to see a lot more endorsement. Like one of the things that caused this big crash, or didn't cause, but helped, uh, so, um, it helped uh, strengthen this crash back here from five thousand to three thousand dollars was Jamie Dimon spreading a bunch of fud about Bitcoin. Jamie Dimon is a pretty big figure in the financial industry, so it really didn't help. What we would like to see is people like Jamie Dimon supporting Bitcoin. Now, of course, people ragging on Bitcoin gets the news. People saying Bitcoin's awesome doesn't get as much news, but we'd like to see a lot more endorsements by people that really know what they're talking about. We would we'd very much like to see that because that helps bring support back into the market. And also, if we can see a lot more people in the cryptocurrency space that are newer here start seeing some returns so they don't get discouraged, that would also be pretty good, because I see a lot of people in my cryptocurrency, or in my comments, rather, saying that, oh, well, I bought up here $20,000, and now I'm screwed, because I lost a bunch of money, and that, that kind of sucks, because a lot of people are losing a lot of money here, because a lot of people think that Bitcoin is just a get-rich-quick scheme. It's not. A lot of people think that, but that's not the way it works. You, d you don't just put 10 bucks in, and then drive a Lamb Lamborghini out of the market. That's not the way this works, okay? That, that's just not how that, that's not how that happens. You don't get rich by just throwing money into Bitcoin. A lot of people think that, but a lot of people don't understand how markets work. They just say, oh, well, I'm investing my money. Of course I'm going to make money, but that's not how this works. There's so many people in the cryptocurrency market that invest, and they have no idea what they're doing, which is, I mean, it's a double-edged sword because it, sometimes it, because sometimes the FOMO of that creates a very nice bull run that we all get rich off of, but at the, on the flip side of that, that also can cause a very severe bear market where we all lose a bunch of money because a lot of people got screwed and now they're exiting the market and basically the only people left are the people that really know what they're talking about and are really interested in the market and really dedicated. And that kind of segues into what I want to talk about at the end of this video and that is I want to talk about the importance of long-term trading. Now I talk about this in a lot of videos but hear me out. It's very important to take a longer-term look at the market. Now I do think 2018 has a I'm not saying there's going to be a bull year, but I think it's more than likely that it is going to be. I think 2018 is still going to be a good year for cryptocurrency because adoption is continuing to rise. A lot of technology is still continuing to pour into the space. A lot of funding is pouring into the space. A lot of very smart people are starting very good projects in the space. There's a lot of scams out there. They'll be weeded out as time goes on, but there are a lot of good projects happening in the cryptocurrency space. Like uh, I think EOS is a pretty good project. We'll see what happens with EOS when it launches its, when its ICO finishes. There are a lot of good projects like Ethos. Ethos is uh, it's leaving pre it's it's leaving pre-release uh, actually two days from now. So we're going to see what happens with a lot of technology. But I want to talk about the importance of long-term investing. Now, the reason I say this is because, like I said, we need to look at or not like I said, but we need to look at history so that we can actually have an idea of what's going to happen in the future. Because we don't have a crystal ball, but we do have charts for what happened in the in, pa in the past. So we can use a little bit of hindsight to kind of extrapolate where we'd like to be in the next couple of years. So if you invested $100 back here at $200 and then you sold it up here, it'd be worth $10,000. Because you bought half a Bitcoin, you could sell half a Bitcoin for $10,000. You bought the half a Bitcoin for $100, you sold it for $20,000, and you got $10,000. That's a 100x return because you bought down here at the bottom. If you bought over here at the all-time high and then you sold three years later or a little over three years later at the all-time high again, 
you still would have made like 15x. That's still a pretty good return compared to like the stock market, the stock market or something. So guys, it's really important to war to not worry about. It's very important to think about the long-term aspect of trading because Bitcoin moves very quickly, which means that it's easy to do short-term trades and short-term investments in Bitcoin. But that also means that long-term trades and investments in Bitcoin, and especially in altcoins that are up and coming, that means that they have a lot of room to grow. And that means that if you hold them for several years and they're still around in several years and they're doing what they say they want to do in several years, like EOS or like uh, Ethos, some of these cryptocurrencies, if they do what they say they're going to do, they're going to make you a ton of money. There are people that bought a lot of these cryptocurrencies like NEO. There are people that bought NEO like down here. There are a lot of people that bought NEO before this chart even began, before NEO was even on Bitfinex. There are a lot of people that bought NEO and they're freaking crazy rich right now because NEO went to like $160 or $180 at its all-time high. I forget which one. A lot of people get very, very rich off of altcoins, so don't just look at Bitcoin, but you need to look at the at the market from a long-term standpoint. I'm going to show you what I show you in a lot of videos, and that is what I'm doing here. What I'm doing here is I'm zooming out. We need to go out to the, to the week chart so we can actually see this. This is what I like to show you in a lot of videos. This vertical line represents 2040, and this horizontal line represents $1 million. So this right here is the intersection of 2040 and $1 million on the Bitcoin chart. And as you can see, you can't even see the chart. You can't even see the entire history of Bitcoin. This starts right back here in 2013, and this is where we are right now, or this is where we are right now. You can't even see it. This is the long term of Bitcoin. You see, the long term of Bitcoin has not even been close to developed yet. We have a long time left in Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, and the average life expectancy in America is 76.8 years. I have a weird memory. Don't ask why I know that number by heart. It's the life expectancy in America and in a lot of first world countries, pretty much any country where you have access to the, to the ability to trade cryptocurrencies, pretty much all of you guys watching my videos are going to be able to hold Bitcoin, buy Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies and hold them for a decade. You're going to be able to do that. So guys, in any investment, but especially in Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, you need to be able to look at the long term. You need to be able to look at what it's going to bring you in the long term. People that bought Bitcoin when it was worth $10 and then sold it at $200 made a crap ton of money. They made a lot of money. And if you buy at any price right now and then you sell it up here at a million dollars, if Bitcoin goes to a million dollars, I'm not saying it will. I have a video on that. It'll be a link right here. I'm not saying it will. But if you, but if it does and you buy now and you sell then, you're going to make a lot of money. It's going to change your life. That's how much money you're going to make. So, guys, I want you guys to not worry too much about what's going to happen in the remainder of 2018. I want you guys to worry more about what's going to happen in the remainder of your life. Because a lot of you guys, my uh, my target, not my target audience, my actual audience, is in between the age of uh, most of your most of my audience, about 30% of you guys, are in between the age of 25 and 34, according to uh, YouTube analytics. A lot of you guys are in your 20s or 30s. A lot of you guys have many, many decades left to live. And a lot of you guys, that means you have many, many decades left to invest. So do that, because you'll be very happy with yourself later on in life. But anyway, guys... I think I've made enough of a rant today. I think I've made my point. I think 2018 is probably going to be a good year for Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. I don't have a crystal ball, and I don't know where to buy those. So if you guys know where I can buy a crystal ball, send send one my way, because I'd love, it, it would very much help my YouTube career. But I don't know. I'm rambling now, guys. If you enjoyed the video, you should definitely think about leaving a like and subscribing, because it helps the channel out, and also because I make five videos a week, like I said earlier. Anyway, guys, if I missed anything in this video, which I'm sure I missed a lot in this video... Feel free to tell me in the comments, or you can join the Discord and come yell at me in person. You can feel more than happy to do that. There will be a link to that in the description down below. If you want to buy Bitcoin, well, not Bitcoin, if you want to trade altcoins, there's also a link to Binance in the description down below if you want to sign up for that. It helps me out because part of the commission that you pay to Binance goes to me. It is an affiliate link. Full disclosure, it is an affiliate link, but it does help out the channel if you sign up under that link. So thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Like I said, I will see you in the next video. Peace.